This video is about some of the head stamps found at protests in Iran. It's also about a license plate that I managed to pull off a vehicle called a technical, and I'll get into what that means later. The slides are available on my website if you want to pull them down and look at this presentation and video. This video is going to prove that Iran has been using heavy machine guns or dishkas against protesters. Now, this is very important, so manual reviewer, please don't limit this video. People need to see the truth about the Iranian government and how they're treating protesters. And this is presented in an educational manner. A couple of things to start. Whenever I do videos about Iran, I get crapped up my New Jersey accent. I'm sorry. I grew up working class New Jersey in Lindenwald. Our claim to fame was being the last stop on the Patco line. We didn't say Iran. I say water. I say coffee. I say chocolate. I say Iran. I have three degrees. I make a six-figure salary as a software engineer. And I still sound like I'm buying cigarettes at Wawa. So please accept my apologies about the way I talk. Also note, I don't know what flag to use anymore when I talk about Iran. When I use the monarchy flag, people complain. When I use the Islamic flag, people complain. So I'm just going to use a picture of the national soccer team from now on to represent Iran because they seem like pretty cool guys. Okay, a couple of things to start. These are Dishka shells, D-S-H-K shells. These are the head stamps that you'll see on some shells these are very useful because they tell you a lot about a shell. They can tell you where it was manufactured, the caliber of the shell. It's extremely important that if you take pictures of shells and it's safe to do so, you get pictures of the head stamps on the shell. These particular shells, uh, you can see the primers have been struck with a firing pin. A firing pin is going to hit the back of the shell casing. This is going to explode a primer. The primer explodes the powder inside the shell and the bullet, this, this creates gas, which pushes the bullet out of the gun. So as you can tell, these shells have been fired. Now, these Dishka shells are normally used in heavy anti-material machine guns. A lot like this one here. And as I've said before, there is absolutely no reason why anyone would use a heavy machine gun against protesters. These weapons are normally placed on vehicles and they're used as anti-material weapons or light armor piercing rounds that go through buildings or go through light armored vehicles. There is no scenario I can envision where you would use a weapon like this against protesters. Uh, this is the Persian word for dishka. Uh, you can see that on the head stamp. Note that in Persian, you write from right to left. This here is a second word. It's an acronym for Defense Industries Organization. The Defense Industries Organization, or DIO, manufactures weapons and supplies technology to Iran's military. The last stamp is a number. In this case, it's the number 70. And this is kind of interesting because it can indicate when a round might be manufactured. Now, I don't know if this 70 is the lot number, meaning this was the location and the month when this round was manufactured. But 70 has an interesting significance because if you look at the um, Jalili calendar, which is the calendar that people use in Iran, the 70 could mean the year 1370. Uh, so that might be a date of manufacture of 1991 in the Gregorian calendar. I can't be sure unless I have more shells to compare this to. So this is why it's so important to get pictures of the head stamp. We can kind of figure out when and where these shells have been manufactured. Uh, interesting side note, Iran just had their own Y2K problem. You know, Back in uh, the year uh, 2000, people thought the world was going to end because computers didn't know how to handle four-digit dates. And uh, Iran just had their own Y2K problem because uh, we went from the year 1399 and all the dates in Iran's computers were two-digit dates. And they had to reconfigure all their computers to... Uh, four digit dates because of the year 1400 in the Jalili calendar. Now let's keep going here. So this is a Dishka machine gun mounted on an Iranian technical. A technical is a, any civilian truck that's armed with usually a medium or heavy machine gun, although you can put other things on these vehicles. The word technical, by the way, goes all the way back to Somalia when aid agencies were working with warlords in Somalia and they essentially had to pay bribes to these warlords to let their aid go through in Somalia, they became known as technicals because on an expense report, you can't put bribe to warlord. So you have to put the word technical payments or security payments. So that's where the term technical came from. Now this is a screen cap from a video that's been floating around. Uh, numerous people have sent me these videos. I'm not sure 
who's the original source of this video. But you can find this on Twitter very easily if you want to watch the full video. Uh, this particular machine gun, this disc of fires 12.7 by 108 ammunition, just like the ammunition seen here. Now, what's interesting here is that this vehicle is most likely a Revolutionary Guard or IRGC um, vehicle because of this dark green license plate. I can't geolocate this vehicle because the license plate is really blurry. The last two numbers on Iranian license plates give the province code. And of course, it, it might be common for Iran to move vehicles around provinces if they need to uh, send vehicles to a hotspot. Uh, but I think this license plate may say 11, or at least the Arabic or Persian numerals for 11. Uh, 11 is reserved for Tehran. So maybe this vehicle came from Tehran. I don't believe they are in Tehran. I also believe that uh, some of these guys are besieging militia. Uh, besieging militia is kind of like a... Um, a volunteer group uh, where when you join this militia, you get some weapons training. Uh, it's almost like a, a volunteer sort of National Guard. Uh, so I believe that these besiege guys are maybe working with IRGC guys as the muscle or extra security elements uh, for the IRGC to uh, or the Revolutionary Guard to conduct their operations. A couple of final thoughts. This is Iran, not America. In America, we have the Second Amendment. It is fairly common for people to buy 50 caliber rifles and use them in long range shooting matches. Iran does have gun ownership, but it's mainly shotguns and rifles used by hunters and farmers. So the odds that a civilian might possess a 12.7 millimeter rifle is effectively zero. Number two, feel free to take down this video and retranslate it and send it to people who need to see it on Telegram or whatever. And number three, if you do collect intelligence, please do not place yourself at risk. But if it is safe for you to do so, please get a picture of the head stamp, the back of the shell, because from that rear of the shell, we can determine a lot of interesting things like we did today. Thank you so much for watching.